My sister requested I cover the history of the Yellow Ranger of the Gokaijers for her birthday. After some consideration, even though I usually cover monsters on this channel, I decided to give it a go. So without further ado, let's make this showy. <laughs> Luca Milfi, aka Gokai Yellow, was played by Mao Ichimichi, who was 19 in 2011 when the show began to air. To match the personality of the character she was playing, she used different pitches depending on whether Luca was excited or calm. Just using her voice seems to be what Ichimichi likes, because she enjoyed recording her lines for the scenes played by her suit actor more than she liked being in front of a camera. She went on to work mostly as a voice actress and would later play another Super Sentai Ranger, the Android Raptor 283 from Q-Ranger, this time only providing the voice. She's also provided voices for other characters across the Toku world, such as Alien Marluru from Ultraman Trigger. Before we move on, we should also mention another person involved in the development of Gokai Yellow. Naruhisa Arakawa, who was the head writer of the Gokaiger series, probably gets the credit for developing Gokai Yellow's brash personality. <laughs> Okay, we have a whole show's worth of in-universe history to cover. Since this is a bio of Gokai Yellow, and not all of the members of Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger, I'm going to mostly be covering events in which Luka herself played a big role, and only touching briefly on other occurrences. For example, in the very first appearance of the Gokaigers, the Shinkinger vs. Gosager movie, Luka was simply briefly introduced with the rest of her team, and didn't really affect the plot on her own. With that out of the way, let's begin with episode 1 of Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger. Luka and the rest of the Gokaigers arrived on Earth looking for the greatest treasure in the universe. Captain Marvelous, aka Gokai Red, immediately had Luka sell off one of her pieces of precious jewelry so that they could get their hands on some Japanese currency, much to her dismay. The Zongyak Empire entered Earth's orbit at the exact same time to try to take the Earth again after their failed first attempt years ago. The Gokaigers would end up being the only force that would prevent them from doing so. The pirates continually battled Zongyak's forces while searching for the 35 grand powers of the Super Sentai in order to obtain the greatest treasure in the universe. Whenever Luka battled, she had a tendency to use two swords and swing them around skillfully like whips using wires. Luka gave Gokai Pink advice on how to be a helpful friend to Gokai Blue in Episode 4, and in Episode 6 took a job as a maid in order to get a ring she wanted as payment. The formerly poor and now extremely spoiled father who hired her had a golden tree that provided him and his daughter with unlimited money that Zongyak was after. Luka protected the tree, and charged the family for it, and then learned the daughter wished they didn't have it. Luca helped the father get over his greed by saving his daughter's doll instead of the gold tree when their mansion was burned down, but Luca made sure to also grab the ring she wanted out of the fire. In episode 7, Luca revealed to Dawn her routine of trying to find 10 shooting stars before bed to sharpen her vision. Wow, I guess she must be a star at that. <laughs> uh, let's move on. In episode 10, Luca and Joe infiltrated a Zongyak ship while disguised as Gorman, and Luca sneakily helped the disguised Joe win a poker game by switching out cards, unbeknownst to him. In the film Gokaiger Gosager Super Sentai 199 Hero Great Battle, <laughs> which is between episodes 16 and 17 in the continuity, Luca met Gosei Yellow, and neither of the two could stand each other at first, despite how similar their personalities are. Eventually, they did become friends. Gokai Silver joined the crew in episode 18, and Luka thought his moves in Mecha were pretty cool. Luka, Marvelous, and Bokin Red went on a treasure hunt for a precious in episode 21, and in episode 23 we got to see some of Luka's backstory. An encounter with a girl who had a sister who hadn't been born yet reminded Luka of the days when she was poor on another planet and trying to take care of her younger sister, who unfortunately died. Bosco, an evil pirate, also after the greatest treasure in the universe, arrived to try to steal the grand power of GoGo5 from Go Pink, who was taking care of an injured boy. Luca wanted to distract Bosco on her own to save Go Pink and the boy, but Gokai Pink reminded her she was there as well, and showed Luca she needed to stop treating her like she was her little sister who needed to be protected. The two devised a scheme that saved the day. In a later story, Luca, Joe, Marvelous, and the Hurricangers were captured and forced to compete in a game show, but escaped thanks to the Hurricangers. In the following episode, she and Gokai Green, who Luca had a tendency to smack whenever he acted cowardly, had their minds temporarily swapped. 
The Gokaijers later got a new weapon, the Gokai Galleon Buster. But surprisingly, Gokai Yellow was the only Gokaiger who never fired it. We got an even bigger backstory reveal for Luka in episode 34. Kane, a childhood friend of Luka, arrived on Earth. Except it was a Zongyak Kaijin disguised as him and the real Kane had been captured. Luka was later captured too and the Kaijin disguised himself as Luka to fool the other Gokaijers. But they caught him eating broccoli, which Luka can't stand and realized he was a phony. Meanwhile, in Luca's discussions with Kane in captivity, we learn that when the two of them were homeless, living on a distant planet, Luca dreamed of saving enough money to buy an entire planet for kids displaced from their homes because of the evil Zongyak Empire. Luca later started stealing money from Zongyak to begin working toward this goal, and that was how she met Marvelous and Joe, the former of which invited her to join the Gokaijers and help them find the greatest treasure in the universe. Realizing how valuable a treasure like that would be, Luca agreed. At the end of episode 34, Kane left Earth, happy Luca had found such good friends. The Gokaijers discovered their own grand power and defeated the Prince of the Zongyak Empire a few episodes later. Episode 44, A Lovely Christmas Eve, was focused mainly on Luca, who helped a girl save her brother and some others who were turned into dolls. By letting herself get turned into a doll to distract the culprit, long enough for the girl to transform into Gokai Yellow herself and steal the wand needed to restore everyone. We're near the end of the series. The Gokaijers defeated Bosco and successfully obtained the greatest treasure in the universe, which spoke to them and said that they could use it to reshape the universe however they would like. But all the previous Super Sentai would cease to exist. Luka would have liked to use it to restore her younger sister back to life. But in the end, the Gokaijers were unwilling to wipe out the Super Sentai, even after a huge Zongyak fleet attacked, so they destroyed the treasure. They ended up taking out the entire fleet on their own in the final episode, and defeating the Emperor of Zongyak. The series ended with the pirates going back to space to take on the remainder of Zongyak on their homeworld. That wasn't the end of the history of Gokai Yellow yet, though. She appeared, of course, in Go Busters vs. Gokaiger, as well as several superhero Tyson movies. When the Gokaijers showed up in Zhu Ojer, Luka was there too, with some unusually long hair. In the middle of the credits of Q-Ranger vs. Space Squad, she showed up and tried to steal a macaroon from Raptor 283, in a comical scene which pointed out how they both had the same voice. She also appeared in the four-episode special Super Sentai Strongest Battle, alongside Captain Marvelous. She was trapped inside an evil suit of armor that was searching for the strongest Super Sentai Ranger, and was later chained up when the armor trapped Aka Ninja instead. Gokai Red rescued her and the Red Ninja, and then had to destroy the communications barrier covering planet Nemesis. Most recently, Luka appeared in Kaizoku Sentai 10 Gokaiger, a movie celebrating the Gokaiger's 10th anniversary. She pretended to capture Gokai Red and turn him in as part of a plot by the Gokaijers to take on a group of evil pirates who partnered with the Defense Ministry. But even though she was pretending, she took the reward anyway. Luca later returned, disguised as a reporter, and exposed the Defense Ministry on TV with a gift from the Kira Majors, and then battled the bad guys using Gokai Green's Ranger Key, until she and Don were able to swap their keys. Using a Gokai Galleon Ranger key, all the Gokaijers gained access to a new form and were able to wipe out the villainous pirates. And that was the history of Gokai Yellow, as of now anyway. I can't end the class until we've checked out Gokai Yellow toys and until I've reminded you to like and subscribe. Well, there, I just did remind you, so now for the toys. Gokai Yellow Ranger keys are of course available, multiple varieties in fact. But there is also an SH Figuarts Arts Gokai Yellow perfect for collectors, a Sentai Hero series toy, a smaller Safubi Hero variety, keychains, non-posable figures, and more. If you want Gokai Yellow figures, they certainly exist. Thanks for watching everyone, I want to finish this video by wishing my sister a very happy birthday, and by saying that the history of Gamora is well underway and I hope to be done with it soon. See you all next time! Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year! See you next time.